Every year in that weird bit between Christmas Eve and the New Year, some cyclists ride their bikes 500 kilometers in an effort to bank some winter miles, burn off a bit of festive food, or simply to get out of the house for a few hours. If this challenge has seemed impossible to you, we've got some brilliant tips that will make it a little bit easier and hopefully allow you to smash the challenge. Okay, so you have eight days to tick off 500 kilometers or 310.7 miles, which averages out about 62 and a half kilometers a day. That might, to a seasoned cyclist, sound like a relatively manageable task, but there are some things working against you, such as the fact that the festive season is a time of many beers, which cause hangovers. Family and friends are often visiting or hosting you, and disappearing off for a ride might not be socially acceptable. And then there is, unless you're in the southern hemisphere, some rather grotty weather to deal with. Let's plan how to tackle this challenge and look at some tips that we've picked up in previous years. If you're feeling super keen, you could just go and get it all done in one go like our Brad did last year. Surprising your relations with an unexpectedly long bike ride isn't a good idea at the best of times, but during a holiday where one of the base intentions is to spend time with loved ones, you risk making yourself a very unpopular elf. For many of us, Christmas Day itself is off the cards when it comes to potential cycling days, but if you are able to get out on the 25th, it can be one of the nicest days of the year on the roads, as most people are having a lovely, lazy morning in bed with a bit of bubbly and some presents. I'll stop before I talk myself out of going for a ride. The key thing is to plan ahead by finding out what your potential pockets of time for riding are. That will make it a lot easier for you to fit your riding around socializing and other festive activities with the added benefit of allowing you to pre-plan your routes. More on that in a bit. Oh, and a good piece of advice here would be to avoid putting a massive ride on the morning after any big parties. A hangover and 160 kilometers into a headwind, they really do not mix well. As a massive fan of a clean and well-prepared bike, my top tip to you would be to prepare your bike well ahead of the Rafa Festive 500. Doing the maintenance work well in advance will allow you to pick up on any mechanical problems, such as a worn chain or any loose cables. That means that you can do the work on your own bike or take it to a shop and have the perfect steed that's ready to tackle eight days of pretty difficult riding. Designing a selection of routes is a great way to ensure that you don't get bored of riding the same roads every day. A great way to do this is to jump onto something like Commute and then pick five or six destinations. They don't have to be the same distance away from your starting point, but make sure they're in different directions so that you hit different roads. Once you've got one of these destinations set, you can simply allow Commute to choose the roads that others have recommended in the past. It's a great way of forming some new routes. The weather is gonna be potentially rather grim, but one of the best ways to get out of the door when faced with inclement weather or a hangover is to know that your friends are gonna be waiting for you at the start point. If you don't know any cyclists in your area, then fear not. The local cycling club could be a great place to meet people for a spin, even if you only head out with them for one ride in the week. If their rides maybe aren't what you're after, then you could try Link My Ride. It's an app that helps cyclists let other cyclists know about rides that they're planning. You can create a route to share with friends or make it public so that others can join you. For those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, clothing is going to play a crucial role in getting you through a block of riding in the depths of winter. Now, we can't tailor our advice to everyone's specific location, but starting with a good base layer is always a strong way to start. After that, you're gonna need a good jacket, potentially an extra layer up top, something to keep your head warm, tights that will keep your legs turning, and protection for your extremities in the form of overshoes and gloves. You'll likely need to work out a solution for washing and drying your kit overnight, a process that will quickly make you realize why the pros have sworn yours. Shoes are often the trickiest thing to get dry when the roads have been wet and damp kicks are also probably the most depressing thing to pull on. Wash your shoes out if they get soaked, then remove the insoles and have a stack of old newspapers ready to stuff in there. 
you should come down in the morning to perfectly dry shoes. You might be tackling the festive 500 with the intention of burning off a lot of those Christmas calories, but don't forget to fuel those miles. You're gonna be riding through some challenging conditions and the consecutive days of cycling can really hamper your immune system, which is something that you're going to need with lots of socializing to do. Ensure that you have a good breakfast before heading out of the door. Warming porridge is always nice on a chilly morning. Then take some food for the road. My personal favorite around the festive period is a turkey stuffing and everything else sandwich. It's not the easiest to eat, I'll admit, but it is incredible for morale. As ever, a cafe stop is highly recommended by us, and once you get home, a nice cup of tea and a mince pie or three will help you to recover for the following day. Now, I don't wanna be that guy, but if you've got a big ride planned with friends the following morning, then try to take it a bit easy when going out for drinks. Alcohol is annoyingly bad for your ability to ride bikes, and it can seriously suppress your immune system opening you up to getting ill. As someone who sampled many alcohol-free drinks during England's Euro 2021 run, thanks to some very fun concussion, I can say that they make for very tasty and genuinely hydrating alternatives if you're looking to cut down or completely avoid the booze. It's very easy to start the challenge with fresh legs, smash it on the first ride, and then be groveling through seven more days because your fitness is nowhere and you've overdone it. Remember, it's the middle of winter. The form that graces us in the summer probably won't still be there. So take it steady and ride within yourself. Some of the shortest days of the year happen around the festive period, and that can mean some very dull days. Lights are a great way to allow you to get out early or ride past sunset, and they will also add to your visibility during daylight hours. Whatever you have on your bike with consecutive days of riding on the cards, you'll need to remember to charge them up regularly. So have a charging station set up ahead of your first ride. If you're riding with electronic gears, this is a good opportunity to remember to pop them on charge too. Now I'd really like to hear your top tips for tackling the Rafa Festive 500 in the comments down below. Are you gonna be heading outside on the bike or are you gonna be getting those miles in on the indoor trainer? Remember to like this video, subscribe before you go, and we will see you in the next one.